Now, you've made a pretty compelling argument here about you know fats versus carbohydrates for fuel and why one is more inflammatory than the other. Do you want to get into that? Because I find, find this really compelling as to why one is superior than the other one. Oh, yeah, definitely. So so just quickly, um, with the fats, they provide twice as many electrons and the electrons enter at complex two. So they kind of jump the queue. So they skip over complex one and then they go down the electron transport chain and we get our water and our ATP again. So because so you're going to get twice as much water out if you use fat as a fuel. And it also is going to skip over complex one, which in terms of biology, it's a, a more leaky complex. So it means the electron, which when it leaks, we could call it a free radical. So if people constantly eat carbs nonstop, electrons are going to leak out of it and we end up there's like a super, this gets a bit complicated, but um, it basically is a really good way to prime yourself for diabetes at a sort of quantum level. There's so many different ways we can sort of explain this, but if people eat carbs all day, first of all, they're making less water. And then secondly, the electrons um, from the carbohydrate, because at the quantum level, um, the, the mitochondria can tell a difference. Where did the electron come from? Was it a fat or was it a carbohydrate? So it's going to create a lot more free radicals, which is what we would call inflammation. Then when the mitochondria get inflamed, um, they swell a bit. So the upshot of this is it just set, makes the electron transport chain a bit longer. So it's like an obstacle course and making it a bit longer. All the people doing the race are just going to take longer to get to the end. So it's kind of uh, less efficient. In saying that, um, this is a kind of really um, awkward topic. It's like, okay, well, it's pretty much well studied, like the Baltimore study, that's a very large study on people shows that being a fat burner overall is better for health metabolically, and it's a less inflammatory fuel, and it's more efficient. But what can happen is, is there are certain circumstances or people or environments where if you very now and again run electrons through complex one, it's going to kill off um, the like weakest and the oldest mitochondria as long as you just don't eat carbs all the time. Because there are people that do cyclical keto or carnivore. Um, I know a lot of people who are carnivore and keto and they do eat birthday cake sometimes with their kids. So what will happen then is the electrons are going to go out through complex one and it's going to it's part of like an autophagy cycle. So that that's going to kill off a, um, a load of old and damaged mitochondria. But like I said before, if you're constantly running these electrons through complex one, it, it um, basically kills off our superoxide surge response. And it's just like I said, another way to get insulin resistance and diabetes. Um, so people pretty much have known for a very long time from food choices, what causes type two diabetes. But then of course there are more intricate reasons and blue light to add in on top. D did that answer your question? Okay. Yeah, no, it's brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. No, I find that fascinating. Uh, to me, that's one of the more compelling arguments for sort of leaning towards fats, beta oxidation over glycolysis. And obviously, like you said, we're creating more water. We're getting more bang for our buck in terms of energy, but it's also low in deuterium. So it's like win, win, win. Oh, oh yeah, exactly. And uh, so that there's, but also I, I always have to emphasize because with the whole food wars and different variations of like carnivore and carnivore-ish, Nowadays, I think we, we have to club together because there's so many people that are anti-meat full stop that, like I say, I don't care if somebody eats honey or apples or um, and, and stuff, as long as they don't go around trying to tell people, especially young women, that fish and um, eggs and meat is going to kill them. So that that's sort of where I'm at. And it's like everything. Of course, we have we know people that really thrive on super super ketosis and carnivore all the time but there's a lot of people who it's sort of their carnivore or keto sort of 90 or 80 percent of the time so every now and again they'll deviate and it's just about making sure people are not demonized in say the keto or carnivore community because they um they ate a, a, an apple or they had they had an allotment and they liked they grew vegetables or fruits for a very short period of time or they they picked some berries and uh, and and bought some local honey just in the summer yeah. so so i think it's it is slightly nuanced because i think it's something that people can go to extreme and then it turns people off or it starts to look cultish and I'm more about now we just need to stop all this ridiculous bullshit about the meat um, killing people because it's gone sort of next level now. But there's loads of biochemical evidence 
of why overall, as you, as you pointed out, fat is a, a less inflammatory fuel. It, it makes more water. There's less deuterium. And sometimes just taking out all the produce, it, it takes away the complexity. And, and I do definitely think that's why carnivore can work really well for certain people that are just completely incapable of um they just it has to be really simple i'm not you know people can be super intelligent um but they're just so chaotic they just uh, you know like a mad professor that you need to just say okay just eat meat and fish and eggs and don't eat anything else but then it takes away a lot of sort of the confusion about the local and seasonal um and things yeah it is fascinating though to understand why you know some of this causes problems why some of it relieves problems and sometimes we assume that it's for a one reason that seems obvious, but it could be something like deuterium that a lot of people have no idea about. And when you start to understand some of this stuff, it's, it just all adds, doesn't it, to, to build this puzzle so you've got this clear image you can kind of understand. It's really all about getting back to the way we would naturally live in a wild setting, eating organically, eating locally, being grounded, being in natural light, you know, staying away from all the so-called progress, the technology in the bedroom and the artificial blue, like all of that stuff. So it's quite in that sense, it's quite simple, isn't it? What we're we're saying here is just to eat and live as ancestrally appropriate as possible in modernity, which is very, very difficult for a lot of people. But in some oh. ways, that, that's about the crux of it. Oh, no, I completely agree with you that um, it, it's just going back to um, how nature intended, but also not isolating ourselves from society because some people go OTT with this and they want to live in a Faraday cage in an EMF blocked um, house with no no neighbours for, for 10 miles. So it's also about making sure that people uh, understand, uh, if like when I say to people about People say, oh, do I have to see the sunrise or um, go out for an afternoon walk? It's like, well, if you're not outside, you're inside. And that's when you're around your computers, around the artificial light. So I think it's something a lot of people embrace this because a lot of people just find um, connections with nature nat naturally. They don't know anything about quantum biology and they just feel good. And there are lots of people, and especially children, that just you can see how agitated they are. Like children when it's a rainy day and they're all inside. We, my brothers and I used to be like horrific when it was a rainy day because, you know, we are inside, whereas really children should be outside playing. So, yeah, absolutely. Just a connection with nature and then uh, sort of common sense uh, over food. And also I think back to the deuterium and the common arguments that people have, there's all sorts of people on the internet that keep trying to say seed oils are healthy, but I think the deuterium argument ends it for everybody because they're yeah. 200 parts per million and that's sort of 25% uh, more than glucose. And, and we shouldn't really be eating like glucose all the time or, or sugar. I mean, for, for my way of eating, it'd be very rare. But I'm not, like I said before, I don't really care what people do. But the seed oils and the how high they are in deuterium, that ends it for me. And I think also there are lots of people we kind of notice or know when people reduce seed oils, they don't sunburn. So I think um, eating seed oils also... Um, makes people afraid of the sun so then they get low vitamin d and then you know so it's a whole other process people be like oh yeah i can't go out in the sun because i'll burn in five minutes and it's when they get rid of the seed oils they can go out in the sun for, for way longer and get all the benefits um from the sun exposure as well as raising their vitamin d so there's just everything like you say sort of links together and the more yeah. arguments that you have a what that are watertight um the better yeah yeah I've been out in the sun so much. I mean, you can probably see a bit more colour as I come closer to the screen, but I stand yeah. here and look like a ghost. I mean, I, I was out this week. I've probably been in the sun for like 50 hours, you know, peak, peak sun, but just absolutely like no burn whatsoever. I certainly don't put sun cream on. I'm just going to say um, that with um, Britain and, and the sun, we have to, we, you know, even though the UVI sometimes doesn't go over eight, I think if you're in Kent, it's a, it's you, it should be slightly more intense that uh, for people that try and say that in the UK that we never get any sun, when we get sun, it, it's it's really good and you can still get like burnt here if you're, if you're not careful. So I think for sun exposure, if people have um, 
sort of only only realized quite recently it's um, a good thing you still need to build something called a solar color so that would be exposing your skin to the sunlight in the morning like the sunrise then the uva so that's like the earlier part of the day and the uva is important for making neurotransmitters like dopamine serotonin and then later on in the day that's when we've got the uvb for making vitamin d and the sunlight is more intense so you know it's like everything even say if somebody has hears about keto or carnivore and suddenly goes keto or carnivore overnight it, it, sometimes it doesn't work as well you know it's not as smooth as it could be so it can be the same with sun exposure that if people have been in a lot of blue light and and been sun phobic you don't want to go and sunbathe in crete um straight away you need to gradually re-expose your skin to the sun and also i think again getting rid of seed oils because they can take a couple of years to fully flesh out um, if you've eaten a lot of seed oils, just be careful. The chances of burning are much higher. I know there are people on the internet that say it's a load of rubbish, but I've just seen it so many times about the seed oils and the burning. Yeah. Are you basically in agreement that it's to do with omega-6 to omega-3 fatty acids, the ratio, and rebuilding certain cells under the skin that then have like an inflammatory reaction to the sun? What do you think? Oh, that there can be like multiple pathways because I suppose in terms of how I think about the biology, even though I was a, like a still am a biochemist, I now want to look through things um, uh, uh, through a lens of physics so that there'll be another explanation I have. Yes, I completely agree with that one. I, I think there's several more as well. I, I think there'll be something to do with um, the way in which the the seed oils and and and, and deuterium and other things like that uh because because water and deuterium has a, has a very important it, it sort of interaction with light i just think there's that there's so many different ways that I, I don't want to sort of um invent theories so we'll just stick with that one for now but i think if i sat down and went into detail i'll be able to find plenty of others but also i think sometimes um when it comes to science uh, and papers and stuff like that, even though I was a research scientist, there's loads of basically dodgy studies in there. I, I think sometimes you've got to use your common sense and also a narrative or, or an anecdote is actually data. And over and over again about this sunburning and the poofers, I really don't think people are making it up. And it's like probably amounts to a million people now that have pointed it out. So sometimes it's about people um want to oh i need to validate this scientifically first it's like well actually sometimes you need to use your common sense and look around to what actually happens in real life uh, so the poofers and the burning um i'm sure with your audience and your listeners you'll you'll have plenty of people tell you oh yeah that was me uh, the poofers and the burning yeah for sure but anyway thank you lee it's been more, like so fun to talk to you you too absolute pleasure